Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Smart Investor Market Update, where smart investors get their up-to-date price analysis and market information. Okay, what's happening today? We see that the S&P 500 is up two and is hitting against resistance. You may not see it here, but there's resistance up at the 2510 uh that was made the, the high that was intraday high that was made yesterday the market is attempting to take that out so the S&P 500 is up uh, 2.71 points this is as of recording uh, just after lunchtime uh, today the Dow is up 45 the Nasdaq is down 3 and uh, we have a situation where the markets are still up the markets are still moving to the upside. Can the markets switch? Yes, it can, but the market is still up. And I would not advise any long-term shorts at this point in time uh, because the trend is in a positive direction. And the, the best way to lose money in the markets is trying to pick tops in, in, in the markets. Support at S&P 500 is down at uh, 2400 and resistance is up at 2510. Uh, taking a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, let's just take a look at the Dow futures. We see that the market is coming up against that 22,400 uh, region and we're still in a beautiful uptrend. Market has not pulled back uh, any significant amount ever since the dip we saw in November of last year. So this rally has has gone on and is quite ripe. And it, it what I would recommend when we have such a mature rally, it comes it uh, it reminds me of a fruit on a tree. You will have a fruit on a tree that is ripe. Let's say a mango. You have a ripe ripe mango, and the mango looks very ripe and red, yellow gets very ripe start to get soft and then you see that at any moment this mango is going to fall off the tree that is the analogy here with the S&P 500 the market is up this rally is very ripe uh, would I go short this market no but I can tell you that that we are at some nosebleed levels here in the market and it's uh, the strategy at this point in time is to tighten your stop losses on the, a lot of the positions that you have looking at the us dollar index us dollar index bounced this week quite nicely this is the broader channel we're in with the, the us dollar index we see the high that was made at the beginning of the year uh, near the 104 market came down to support in this 92 region and what we see is that the market is attempting to bounce. The market broke down and we see buyers step in and is trying to close this dollar index above this 92 level. And if that's the case, this is what we could call a snapback trade where folks think or thought the market was short. People got short here and the market has snapped right back and, and we could see a a rally here in the value of the dollar so that is something to look out at look out for another scenario is that the market could just go up a little and then break this 92 level but at this point in time how it's looking is that we are still in a very range bound environment with the broader us dollar index uh, taking a look at the euro currency just clean up this chart a little euro has touched the 120 region that was a high that was made on the year and the market is coming uh, down nicely so that's what's happening uh, here with the euro and similar situation with the dollar where we see the market trying to close down on the week and this could prompt a broader decline uh, in the value of of the euro versus the dollar market another market of interest is the oil market we see oil moving to the upside and uh, we are still in this range bound environment you notice i had this black line drawn 
let me look at the weekly chart as you can see here the market is in this broader consolidation pattern this is crude oil and we're looking to see if the market can break out of here in either direction and if that happens that will end this long-term consolidation we see here in 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 the crude oil market so commodities on a whole a lot of them are in a holding pattern and we just have to wait and see okay looking at uh, looking at uh, some individual stocks uh we see some uh, we see the markets moving uh to the upside and the new kid on the block was roku and we had a roku surging roku is I IPO that has really surged. Now, uh, Roku is a television uh, solution provider similar to the Apple TV. Uh, they have various channels, etc. I actually have an old one. I don't really use it much, but uh, apparently the stock has found legs on its debut. So looking at the Roku, I'm just looking for the ticker symbol. It is R O K U. K U. Let's take a look at what it did today. Entered 16. It's currently up 21. As you can see, this is just one day price action. Just one day price action. We have a long bar of what uh, this IPO has done. So whether it's on the weekly or daily chart, it's just this one bar. So going on the 15 minute, let's go to the five minute chart of this market came up and essentially has just gone up uh, for the uh, remainder of the day. In terms of IPOs, I don't really like to mess around with them uh, because there's just no history of a price action. Normally they may go up for a couple of days, then collapse or sometimes they collapse immediately before going up. It's just not something I am interested in. Speaking of Roku, another stock that was the talk of Wall Street a couple of years ago, but now has really suffered, and is BlackBerry. Let's take a look at longer-term outlook on BlackBerry. As you can see, during the 2003 to the 2008 time frame market was market was hot this stock traded as high as 149 now it's at ten dollars is this something i'll be interested in trading no this is definitely not and in something i'll be interested in especially below ten dollars and especially like oh this is in a broader downtrend while s p 500 is in an uptrend definitely not something i would be looking out or looking at for any type of investment when it comes to stocks i believe in looking at the best stocks in the market and then uh, investing in those stocks okay looking at looking at at bluebird bio inc <laughs> Uh, we d I do try and, and and I do try and uh, look at a number of stocks for you guys so you can look at so we can get a a wide cross section of stocks. Market is clearly in an uptrend. Yes, it's a bit below. Well, not a bit. It is below the high that was made in 2015. If you are long this market, I will remain long. Uh, it's in an uptrend. And uh, uh, maybe a stop loss level could be at 120, uh, a longer term stop loss if you are in this for the more longer term. Okay, PBF Energy. I remember if you want me to analyze a stock, you can email it in the info at smartinvestorcentral.com. These are stocks that folks have sent in for analysis. Now, looking at PBF Energy, market has a lot of overhead resistance went down to support at the 20 dollar region and is rallying this is not something i'll be interested in because the market is in a broader 
series of lower highs, lower lows, a broader downtrend. So I would not be interested in this. To me, this is a is something I would be looking to get rid of. <laughs> looking at Armat Technologies or a market surging above uh, our two new highs for the year if i was along this market i would remain long market surging also above resistance uh, that kept this market at bay uh, for a number of years uh, above the 55 dollar region as you can see the market broke that level and is surging to the upside so this is something i'd be holding on to at this point in time and uh, stop losses can be below 54. This area of support, or this channel area here, if the market starts to break down below that area, maybe it's time to head for the exit. But uh, so a stop loss could be somewhere here and just continue to ride this trend up as long as it continues to give uh, profits. New gold. I have been fairly bullish the gold sector. And yes, we're seeing a, a slight pullback, but I believe once this pullback ends, we could see a, f a fairly large rally in gold. New gold is not one of my favorite gold stocks. Uh, however, uh, the mark is trading at the $3 region. It is a bit speculative, and I wouldn't be. I'll be looking to exit this position if I was. If I owned it, I actually wouldn't even buy this. Uh, I don't like buying stocks under fifteen twenty dollars. Uh, that is just my personal rule for investing. There are a lot of stocks above fifteen dollars to uh, to make profits on. So I don't buy stocks below. $15. The final one we are going to look at today, uh, where is it? Is JBL. Let's take a look. Looking at JBL market, as you can see, is in a defined channel. Market has bounced off of support in that twenty-eight dollar region, uh, pulling back. We see market has pretty significant resistance above it, uh, but this market is in an uptrend. What what we want to see is if the market can trade above the $32 region if it if it closes above 32 that would be very positive so at this point in time this is a hold with a stop loss below this channel bottom at around $27 that would be a good stop loss level again when you are in in stocks you have to know when to get out and uh, and when to get in and this is the point to get out at $27 level let's hope for your sake this market can break to the upside and give you some further gains uh, in the email the the question the, the emailer said that he has actually been in this market from this gap up at 24 so that's not bad it's, he got in at 24 uh, the market is currently at 30 this is definitely a hold with a stop below 27 thank you very much for listening i hope you have a wonderful day remember to subscribe to the channel to get up-to-date price analysis and market information videos thank you for listening have a good day